Today, we're talking budget magic. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to our top five list of budget options for Magic players. I wanna make sure that we get something like this out there so that way new players and old players can all enjoy budget options and not be uh, breaking the bank just to play this game. I think this is a really fun game for a lot of people, but money does tend to be a hiccup. And so if we can find ways to cheapen things up and make sure we're getting the best bang for our buck, that makes sure that all of us can enjoy continuing playing the game without having to just spend tons and tons of money on new products, new cards, that kind of thing. So without further ado, let's jump right into the list. Number one on our list today is choosing the proper format. This is potentially the most important piece to this puzzle because essentially this is gonna set the stage for whatever kind of cards you can actually use and therefore determine essentially the budget you have available for the cards that you will be buying. I wanna talk in particular about four formats today because I think these are the most vi viable for a new player. I think it's very crucial not to talk about things like vintage and legacy because while there are budget options for vintage and legacy, Budget options for Vintage are more like only a few thousand dollars instead of tens of thousands of dollars. So we're going to avoid that a little bit and talk mostly just about these four formats that I think are most impactful and most available uh, for budget players. Number one on the list, we have Casual Kitchen Table. This is the anything goes format, basically where there are no restrictions at all. This is basically up to your playgroup's discretion. This is fun because essentially you can buy whatever you want. If you find a card that is budget friendly and you really enjoy it, you can build a whole deck around it if you want and there's nobody that can say or there's no ban list that can say, nah, that card's not viable or no, that's not a very competitive deck. It doesn't really matter. You can tailor it to whatever your playgroup would like to do. And I think that's really crucial. Most importantly, you do need to choose a, a format that applies to the playgroup that you have available to you. A lot of people play Standard, which is actually the second one on the list. And Standard really does make sense for a lot of people because it is accessible. It's very, very accessible and relatively cheap to build. Now, obviously, if you're trying to build a competitive Standard deck, you are looking in a few hundred dollars, most likely. However, if you're just looking for a budget-friendly option, you can make some sacrifices and build a deck that is decent and still adheres to the standard rule set, but isn't going to be, you know, breaking the bank or super competitive or anything like that. Number three on the list is actually Commander, uh, and I put this on the list because while you can spend tons and tons of money on Commander, there are a lot of options for Commander which makes it very budget-friendly. It's also important to note that in Commander, you really don't have to make significant changes to your deck until you're absolutely ready to do so. Because that format's ban list doesn't change very often, you really don't have to worry too much about cards getting banned out or anything like that. And you can determine, okay, I really like this deck, now I wanna make upgrades to just some of my draw spells or just some of my lands and things like that and kind of make them over time and progress the deck over time a little easier than you can in say standard where the format rotates and you're gonna have to make upgrades later on no matter what because if you're trying to stay viable at all that's just part of it. Uh, Commander really is a good way to do that because it is kind of that eternal format where you don't necessarily have to worry too much about those upgrades over time unless you want to. Fourth and final on the list and I put this on here very importantly it's Popper. Popper is a format that, as I've talked to new, new players over time, they don't seem to know much about Popper, which is amazing because it's such a great format for new players. Uh, the professor over at Tolarian Community College has talked about this being kind of like a legacy light because the power level of the format is very, very high, but because everything has to be a common rarity, it actually isn't all that expensive. You can make a very tier one competitive deck for less than $20 and still enjoy the deck over time, maybe still make some upgrades here and there without breaking the bank. And because again, everything's at that common rarity, even the upgrades aren't gonna be very expensive. Uh, so the popper format as a whole is actually really nice because it balances the accessibility of common cards with the cheapness of common cards in a way that makes it really nice and very competitive without spending too much money. Now, like I said, it's really important to choose a format that is applicable to you and your playgroup. If, if your playgroup really doesn't play Popper or Commander, maybe go for Standard. Or if you guys are just out there to have fun, make sure you're just playing Kitchen Table Magic. Enjoy it. Don't worry about a ban list. Don't worry about a format. Just go out there, have fun, and build a deck that you think you are going to enjoy. Now, number two really applies after you've chosen your format, and this is to research like crazy. 
There are tons of resources out there, things like Scryfall, MTG Top 8, MTG Goldfish. All of these will give you new deck ideas, new card ideas, and maybe some upgrades for the future that you might want to look to do as you start to enjoy the deck. Importantly, what you don't want to do is choose a deck that you think you'll like and then a week later decide, no, I don't really like that, I need to make a new one. Because at that point, you're really not adhering to the budget that you probably set out for yourself when you first started, uh, because you're essentially having to rebuild an entire deck uh, just a week after buying the first one. So what you really want to do is make sure before you spend a penny on magic cards, make sure that you are looking at a deck list that you feel you are really going to enjoy, that really matches the play style that you want to go for. If that's combo, if that's a mid-range style deck, maybe it's an aggro deck, whatever it happens to be, find some budget options for not only the deck list, but some of the cards in the deck list using those resources and hopefully not have to spend an excessive amount of money on the initial build, but then also potentially upgrades down the line. I think that's hugely important. A lot of people don't really take time to research, and unfortunately that means that they kind of get a sour taste in their mouth when they have to go do a whole new deck build because they didn't really enjoy the first one. Tip number three goes very well with the research and deck building process, and that's to find ways to double dip your cards. Now what I mean by that is find cards that will apply to the deck you're already building, but can also apply to future decks that you might have an interest in building later on. So for instance, things like Brainstorm, or Preordain, or Opt, things like that, those are all little cantrip, card draw kind of spells that apply to a multitude of decks that you can play and not have to rebuy later on. Uh, it's really nice when you go to build new decks, because inevitably we all do. As we get hooked into the game, you're going to want to try new things, you're going to want to build new decks, and that is awesome. That means you're enjoying the game and you're loving it, but it's really nice not to have to buy an entire new 60 cards, or 100 cards if you're playing Commander, and instead only have to buy a new 30 cards, or maybe 20 cards if you do the right thing. Now obviously, you can't do that perfectly, you're going to try and find new strategies that are going to utilize new cards, and that is fine. But if you can double dip those cards on the onset and get some of those really flexible and utilization kind of cards, it's a great way to start off your collection with cards that are going to be used in a multitude of decks, a multitude of strategies, and that you're not going to have to rebuy new stuff every single time. It's just a great way not to have to break the bank early on while playing the game. Tip number four is a huge mindset change for a lot of us, but it's something that applies to the entire process throughout step one all the way down to number five, which is to really just be willing to make sacrifices. Uh, it's really easy to get caught up in some of the big powerful spells out there, the Jaces, the, the Elish Norns, the Grizzlebrands, all the really powerful creatures, cards, planeswalkers, whatever. They're awesome cards to get and they're really, really exciting, but they're not in your budget. And I'm sorry, but if that's not in your budget, then what you need to be doing is saying, okay, while I want an Elish Norn, which is a huge creature, really impacts the board, there are other options out there that are not going to do the job quite as well. And that's okay because you're playing on a budget. That's fine. That's what you need to be doing. Maybe that could be an upgrade for future use, but I don't think it needs to be the first goal that you have is to get that big Elish Norn or whatever it might be. Buy cheap options, test them out, test them in your strategy, make sure you enjoy that strategy, and then later on as you find maybe, okay, I needed to refine this here, or I didn't really like this, I ended up having to switch over to this, now I'm looking at different upgrades, or now because I really enjoyed the deck, I can buy that Elish Norn knowing, okay, I really love this, this is definitely going to be the card for me. And so I think that's a really important thing to make sure that you are doing is get in that mindset of, you know, I'm trying and I'm testing, I'm willing to make sacrifices because I'm not trying to build the perfect deck here, I'm trying to build a budget deck. Tip number five really applies later on down the road when you're starting to make some of those upgrades, but you still don't necessarily want to spend tons of money or you're trying to find ways to save money in the long term, and that's to actually upgrade your lands first. Now I know this is going to sound really unexciting because lands, while really important to the game, are not necessarily the most exciting thing to pick up. A lot of people like picking up the big Jaces, things like that, but buying a shock land or a dual land isn't the most exciting thing in the world. However, it is the most foundational piece of the game and the most flexible. Lands are going to apply to every single deck, unless you're playing a no land deck. I know there's somebody out there that's going to call out on that, but importantly, they are played in almost every single strategy. 
And so you're going to pick up a land, and that land, if it's a utility land, a dual land, whatever it might be, is going to apply to a huge, huge list of other decks that you can use that land in. And so not only do you just make a solid upgrade to the current deck that you plan to use, but if you're upgrading or building new decks later on down the road, that card can be used in all of those decks as well. It's a great way, again, to kind of jump back to double dipping. It's a great way to double dip early and just make sure that you're getting the best bang for your buck right off the bat. All right, guys, that's going to be it from us today. I hope you enjoyed these tips, and I really do hope they help you later on down the road as you maybe build new decks or hopefully jump into a new format. I think it's really important to keep these kinds of things in mind, especially for Magic players who are playing on a very tight budget. I don't think Magic is one of those games where you have to spend a lot of money to enjoy it. Certainly, to be really competitive, it can, it can be a bit of a sinkhole, but uh, for those of you who are just looking to enjoy the game and have fun, you can enjoy the game play, have fun, and not spend a ton of money on it. So I do hope these help you. Please make sure to share down below some of the new deck lists or anything like that that you might be willing to uh, put together and play out and test out for us. We'd love to see those. Uh, and if anything is standard or historic legal, we'll actually play it on the channel with you. Uh, so thank you guys so much. I really hope these helped you, and I will see you again very soon.